David Bowie, arguably one of the world's most influential musicians, has died. Bowie died after an 18-month battle with cancer. Tributes are pouring in from fans and celebrities around the globe. The iconic and eccentric megastar is being remembered for his music, of course, and for being a cultural icon, but also for his innovative influence outside of the music business. An example of that is the Bowie Bond. It allowed investors to purchase the rights to all future royalties to be earned from Bowie's music. It was created in 1997 and sold in a bond offering that raised $55 million. Moody's ultimately downgraded Bowie bonds to junk status in 2004 due to the weakness in music sales. Porter Bibb is managing partner at MediaTek Capital Partners and the first publisher of Rolling Stone magazine. Mr. Bibb, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's, it's been a day of hearing these memories and hearing people talk about their, their friend and their colleague and, and the artist of David Bowie. You had a, a slightly different relationship with him. Tell us, from your perspective, what was he like? Uh, unlike any musician <laughs> in the world of rock and roll that I ever encountered and that very few people have ev ever seen uh, before or since. Very, very, very rare individual. And you can tell that from the, the uh, praise that uh, his passing has elicited from everybody down the Archbishop of Canterbury, mm -hmm. two prime ministers of Great Britain, uh, Angela Merkel, who uh, said David Boy helped bring down the Berlin Wall, uh, to all of the artists that he inspired uh, here and abroad. Uh, it's it's, it's un, un, unimaginable that any other musician, or you can't really call him a musician, an mm -hmm. artist, because he was an artist in, in every sense of the word, in every kind of art and craft, not just music, theater, literature, poetry, fashion, design, um, an incredible and vastly underappreciated artist. And in ways that I think a lot of people might not necessarily have known. I mean, your, your world is, is in the financial world, and, and he was an innovator right. there as well with, as we said, the, the Bowie he, bonds. Ab absolutely. Uh, he was one of the first people to securitize future revenue streams, his, his own royalties. And he did this uh, in, the, in the 1980s when uh, securitization and, and right. bonds were just a, 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 a very, very uh, sketchy operation. His, his lasted for more than 20 years when they were finally called and they, they paid almost 8% a year and they were, it turned out to be one of the best investments that you could make in fixed income. For a while they were, they eventually got downgraded to junk. Do you, do you think in retrospect that, that it was, a, it was a, a, as good a move as it, as it seemed at the time? I, I do because they, they, they were downgraded, but before they were called, they actually bounced back. Um, David, David Bowie had several lives, more, more than <laughs> any of us ever deserved to have. And uh, he, he, uh, he, he started to, to go south um, in, in the beginning of the 90s, but when he finally called the Bonds, uh, they, they were really producing and they were not junk anymore. And when you compare them with the securitizations that are going on even today Indeed, yeah. um, with, with uh, auto loans for uh, subprime <laughs> borrowers and that sort of thing, nobody is paying 7.9% uh, for junk bonds today. The innovation behind the, this, the, this artist in every sense of his life went right up to yeah. the very end. I mean, he was sick for a, a, the better part of 18 months, uh, and yet That's he right. continued to sort of produce and create. In, in looking back on that last sort of year and a half, what do you think that we, we can learn about the man? Well, first of all, David Boy was uh, a human who lived in the future, and he, he carefully planned. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this with retrospect and with the knowledge of the news that uh, is just coming out today. But he, he planned the, the album Black Star, which critics have called his finest work mm -hmm. ever. Uh, he had a, a benefit concert scheduled for March 31st at Carnegie Hall with a bunch of his closest music pals, Cindy Lauper, The Roots, uh, Bob Dylan's son Jacob, and, and yeah. a, a few other acolytes. 
And he knew that he, the doctors told him that he, he had less than a year to live. But right up to the very end, and if, if you see some of the artwork uh, that, that is on the Black Star uh, album, un unbelievable. He, lo he looks like somebody uh, who is looking down on us right now from heaven, and I'm pretty sure he is. Just before I let you go, uh, the, the vision that he had, you said he lived in the future. He saw the internet coming. He, he predicted music streaming. Yep. What is it about That's the way right. that he viewed the world that you think allowed him to see all this and, and develop in front of him before it, 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 it ever happened? Well, he, he did not put commercial consideration in, in, in front of his art. And uh, back in the 80s, he predicted not only the, the kind of streaming that Pandora and Spotify mm -hmm. and other uh, streaming services provide, he, he thought that copyrights were going to evaporate and That's become right. useless and that, that music was just going to spread around the world uh, like weeds. And, and uh, he was happy to have that happen to his music. I, I, as a visionary, um, it, it's impossible to estimate the, the, uh, the, 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 the foresight that he had, but who knows where, he came from a, a relatively down market uh, part of London, Brixton, which yeah. is uh, mostly uh, immigrant centric. His father was a, 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 a fundraiser for a charity and his mother was a, a waitress. Um, in, in a coffee shop, uh, he created himself. And, and one of the most interesting interviews was the first one he ever gave to the BBC. Uh, he, he was known in the 70s for his long locks. And he started a society for the prevention of cruelty to long haired people. <laughs> and that, that created quite a stir, a stir in the I'm late sure. 1970s on the BBC. Porter Bibb, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for sharing your memories of the man. It's a pleasure.